Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you my Linux Ubuntu Server 16.04 file server and print server in a box. So as you see from the outside, this looks like a relatively unassuming wooden box. It's uh, got a fairly nice, elegant box joint on the side. And uh, when you open it up, there's a machine inside. So let me show you how I've set this up. This file server is built on a first generation Atom processor board. This is from an Acer Aspire 1 netbook. It's a Z520 Intel Atom running at 1.33 gigahertz. And I've installed two gigabytes of RAM and two one terabyte hard drives for data storage. My boot, uh, my boot partition is mounted on a 32 gigabyte SD card, which is integral to the machine. And I'm running, as I said, uh, Ubuntu server 16.04. Now a few uh, key details about this. You'll see I'm using a uh, SATA power and data extender. This is a male to female cable to connect the laptop drive bay to the upper disk drive. The secondary disk drive is connected to the USB port, which is integral to this daughter board connected to the main board via this ribbon cable. Now you'll see a few other peripheral boards. This is the power switch and VGA out for diagnostics board. And here is the Ethernet interface. Now, I don't uh, primarily use the VGA output because this is an SSH server. So I uh, actually connect to it using a terminal from somewhere else on the network. In fact, as I'll show you in the next video, I've actually configured the terminal so that I can access it via SSH from anywhere in the world, provided I have access to my IP address. Now I have a fan for ventilation and that's uh, braced up against these holes in the side of the box. And on the other side, I use the router to cut out some holes for the USB ports, the audio jack, and the power jack. Now this board runs at 19 volts. I've adapted a resistor in line to power the fan directly off the power input. So the fan runs regardless of the state of the machine. And additionally, I've constructed this device, which is an automatic power on system. Now the way this works is it's got a relay and a supercapacitor with a timing resistor. This forms an RC uh, timer with this relay, which interrupts and presses this button if it, if it detects that the main board doesn't have power for a predefined amount of time. This is basically so that if the board crashes or if the power goes out or something, it will automatically restore and boot back up within a timely fashion. I'll actually show you how that circuit works. I've configured it basically as such. My plus five volt rail from the machine is connected via a diode to a, well, a diode and a resistor. This is, I believe, a 51 ohm resistor. And this is connected to a supercapacitor. This is a one farad 5.5 volt supercapacitor. And this is then subsequently connected to the relay. Now the relay is configured such that the switch is normally closed when not receiving power and this switch is connected directly across the power switch on the motherboard that is it's connected directly across this uh this little button here if you can see let me focus that for you and it's connected across that button so that i can then have the power button held down so long as this capacitor is not charged now, once the five volt rail switches on on the machine, indicating that the motherboard is active, it begins to charge this capacitor. And after about 20 seconds, it reaches a full charge, at which point the switch pops open. And uh, if the power is interrupted, the switch remains open for about 80 seconds as the capacitor slowly discharges through the coil uh, until at which point the uh, relay closes and restarts the machine. Now I've chosen this particularly long RC constant for the reason that I want to make sure that if the machine shuts down due to overheating or something similar, it has enough time to cool down or stabilize in general before the button gets pressed again. So I'll show you this in action. I have the power cable here coming from the 19 volt charger. And when I connect this, the fan comes on automatically. But you'll also notice now the green light on the power board has also switched on, indicating that the machine is running. So the machine's entering its boot sequence now, and I will connect a 
an Ethernet cable to the LAN port here. If I can align it. All right, so now that the Ethernet cable is connected, I can close the box up and file server in the box. So I'll wait a few minutes for this to get finished booting and then I'll show you how to SSH in. The second part of the video, I'll cover what uh, configurations I've set up on Ubuntu server. 